Hello and welcome to another episode of Today, like uh, every day during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic in June 2020, uh, I'm at home in my backyard, uh, which I share with John McCordick, who uh, lives in the uh, downstairs apartment here at the uh, main level apartment, and we share the garden and uh, the deck, and so we've been doing this for uh, quite a while now. And today I'm going to pay a visit to uh, John. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, sewing, uh, the world of sewing process and how she tackles that. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go in. Hello, John. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I got a few questions for you. Today we're talking about sewing. What are you planning to do today? What's the what's the project? This is this is a mending day. Not well, not altogether mending. A bit of mending. So this next project is a very lovely piece of fabric that I'm going to turn. Just needs hemming so that I can turn it into a uh, what do you call those? Panel? A runner. A runner down the middle of the dining room table. Cool. Did you start from scratch or did you know how to sew this from a, way, way back? No, this is a third generation thing about sewing. Ah, okay. So it runs in the family. It runs in the family. And, and, we taught, and we taught you? Uh, my mom taught me and her mom taught her. That's kind of interesting because I was around during the First World War. She got scarlet fever and it's a big family. Yeah. So they uh, isolated her with her mother on the third floor with a sewing machine. What got you to sewing in the first place? Very practical. Money. You find out that to redo the Chesterfield or the chair uh, with something fresh and, and uh, it, you, you literally are going to have to spend the amount you would go out and buy another Chesterfield. The, the recovering is that expensive. So you say, go. Oh, well, I can run a sewing machine. I wonder if I use the stuff that's on there as a pattern, took it off and recut it, could I sew it back together and put it on? And, and if you start with a smallish project, like a chair, it gives you confidence. And when I say it was expensive, it's, it's, there's an aesthetic element in that too, in the sense that it's not just the money, I can't find what I like. Yeah. There's the aesthetic for a price I'm prepared to pay. Sure. So the two things go very much yeah, hand so in hand. Uh, so plus you have good taste. So well, <clears throat> it, whether it's good or not, it's mine. Yeah. Do you find yourself sometimes deviating from uh, the patterns and having to customize or? I remember getting into not, not trouble. It was okay, but I, I had my heart in my mouth when I was making Sheila's wedding gown because. I was using the bodice from one pattern and attaching it to the sleeves from another pattern. That's as creative as I want to Right, get. so you're blending different patterns That's together. Right. But that demands a level of, uh, of what I consider as creativity. Like, for instance, another level, choosing a lovely pattern, uh, sorry, a lovely uh, fabric uh, that matches your um, your sofa, easy chair. your yeah. easy chair, and when you wear this on your easy chair, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Would it be uh, possible to, to give us a quick tour of uh, a sewing machine? Absolutely. What would you like to know? Well, how does it uh, how does it work? What well, are the you, principle? The principle is that you've got two threads and you're weaving them together, which is what makes the strength. Right. You put the top one in up mm -hmm. here. And then you thread it down through the mechanism till you get. Oh, if I, I'm going to sew, I'm going to put that back on there. So you white, white weave it down here. And put it through the needle, which is there. Then the, the, what they call the bobbin is down underneath here. Right. You wind it and put it down and here's the second thread coming up from the bottom. Right. And it's the the mechanism is pretty simple. It just joins the two as 
actually so. What brand is it? It's a. It's a Faf. It's a Faf, and you've had. Have uh, you been faithful to a brand? Uh, no, I have now? not. I, I, I learned on a singer which had a knee treadle that made it go. Yeah. Um, my grandmother had a pedal, pedal one. one and, singer too. And I have used it too. Yeah. Also singer. Yeah. I discovered uh, a term that um, that I use a lot and will use a lot in these episodes is the term interface and I discovered that that term is also used in sewing. Yes. I didn't know that. There's a very good example in the mask. Look, they tell you to make the mask of two layers. Yeah. So what's inside, sorry there's a little makeup on it, proves I'm using it, um, it is lined. It is interfaced. All right, so the, it's, it is a there's actually a layer inside of it. Yes. Yes, sorry. but there's a story around this mask, right? Well, uh, of course, early on, we were worrying about the fact that everybody was short of masks. And then it became clear that for most of us, we didn't need an antiseptic mask. We just needed something to cover our faces. And so the gang on the street got together and said, hey, we could make masks. So what are there, something near 100 people on the street? Yeah. So they put out a call for 100 people, and three of us said, sure, we can make masks. Nice. So we got together in somebody's garden, and we traded the necessaries because the stores were all closed at that point. <clears throat> so we found we had enough elastic, uh, enough interfacing, enough fabric, everybody had leftover fabric, you've always got leftover fabric. Um, and, and we also needed the little wire that, that goes in the top layer to, so that it fits over your nose. Right. So we traded all that stuff around, and I'm not sure how many masks, I made about 35. If everybody made the same, we were up around 100 and we got rid of them all, and people wanted to pay. So I think we sent, about, I don't know, $250 to Michael Garron Hospital. Well, I'd watched Mom sew because she's, she loved it too. Uh, and, but I guess I really didn't buckle into it till I was newly married. Okay. And the same old thing, you need curtains. Right. Um, and that, and Very practical. So, yeah, so uh, mom, I, I guess I first learned on mom's machine, but very, very, it was a very high priority to get one. In 30 years, that $500 <laughs> spread out is, yes. it mends a lot of sheets. <laughs> right, All right, absolutely it did. And mended a lot of holes and made jackets and shirts and shorts and yes. And nightgowns. Nightgowns, and, <laughs> absolutely. And Chesterfield guys. And, and, and a wedding dress, so it did, it did, it did a lot. So, well, uh, thank you for this moment, John. It was a real pleasure to have a conversation with you. I love talking about it. That was a great visit. Uh, John is a real trooper. I mean, among other things that she does, like uh, sewing, she's been, uh, she's still a student at U of T uh, with the Academy of uh, Long Life Learning. Um, she was the founding member of uh, Prolog, uh, which is a, an organization that promotes uh, the performing arts uh, in, in the schools. And she's done many, 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 many great things. I hope you uh, enjoyed this little um, episode about um, sewing. So I discovered a new uh, word, interfaces, inside, and also uh, a great element to bring uh, talent and creativity to life, especially in the world of fashion uh, in particular. So uh, I was uh, glad to start this uh, uh, series with uh, this one episode. Until then, I hope you enjoy. Uh, this and don't forget to wear uh, your mask when you go out there until then I'll see a bientôt